This is the Scrap Metal Commodity Recycling and Economic Report by Ben Lee and Rowley and Goldsbury Cycling, December 18, 2017. Last week, commodity prices were mixed, and most economic reports were positive. U.S. steel production fell as demand from automotive production declined. While near a low for the year, steel production remains well ahead of last year and the year before at this point in the year. Oil fell about $6 a barrel to $57.36 as global demand remains fair and U.S. production hit a new record high, making up for much of the OPEC cuts. Well, here it is. This is the chart that shows production at an all-time high, which is terrific for U.S. jobs and our international trade of balance problems. Iron ore rose $3.5 a metric ton to $71 on good global demand and little other news. Scrap ferrous prices showed the rest of the about $30 per gross ton increase in most major markets for December. On good export and domestic demand. Scrap flows into scrapyards remain okay, not great. Hot div galvanized steel remained steady at, at 932.50 on this chart, but there actually have been many announced price increases of steel in recent weeks. Copper rose a big 15 cents to 313 on little news and continued slow global growth. Copper is down a penny this morning to 312. The five-year chart shows copper is close to the multi-year high it hit a couple of months ago. Copper inventories rose slightly, remaining near a low for the year, thereby stabilizing prices. Aluminum rose 2.5 cents to 92.8 cents as global production continues to ramp up, which should help keep prices from rising much further. Aluminum inventories had a rare move up, which should be expected with the increases in production that are actually coming online now. For those that missed it last week, cardboard stayed steady at the very low level of $115 a ton, driven by major restrictions of paper scrap going into China, which actually remains in place. The U.S. government deficit spending worsened in November. Increased economic growth is one of the keys to turning this around, which will also put upward pressure on commodity prices. It is hoped the probable coming tax cuts will help this. The U.S. Federal Reserve raised interest rates a quarter of a point due to the economy remains in a growth mode. Growth tends to bring higher commodity prices and inflation, so the increased interest rates slow the economy, which will slow the increases. U.S. consumer inflation increased 2.2% in November versus last year. Gasoline prices rose at a faster pace while health care costs fell. Core inflation, which excludes food and energy, fell to 1.7% year-over-year, which is slightly down from October's 1.8%. The Eurozone, which is much of the European countries combined, had their Manufacturing Purchasing Manager Index rise to 60.6 .6 in December from 60.1%. This is the strongest pace of expansion in their manufacturing since June 1997, more than 20 years ago when this measure first began. The Eurozone economy is larger than the U.S. economy, so this will put upward pressure on commodity prices. The U.S. Manufacturing Purchasing Manager Index rose to 53.9 in December, the fastest expansion in manufacturing since January amid increases in production, new orders, and employment. Wall Street's Dow Jones Industrial Average hit a new record up 97 points to 24,652 with the news that tax cuts are coming close to a reality. Tax cuts mean higher profits for Wall Street companies, so the stock market is reflecting this profit growth. This fast growth is nothing other than historic in its magnitude and scope, which will put upward pressure on prices. As always, feel free to call or email me with any questions, and we hope all have a safe and profitable week. We're taking off next week, so Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.